48 hours in Lisbon. Can it be done? We are going to find out. What is up you guys? Today I am in Lisbon. I'm only here for 48 hours, which is two days. We are going to see whether or not that is enough time to do all the things that you should definitely do when you come to Lisbon. I've heard that three days is the amount of time that you need, but I'm only able to do two days because I started my trip over in Porto. I caught the bus last night, which only cost nine euros for a bus for three hours from Porto to Lisbon. But the most important thing of all when planning the trip in general is location. The location of your hotel. That is why I chose to stay at the My Story Rossio Hotel. The location is perfect. It's within the heart of Rossio Square, which is in perfect location location to all the different districts that we need to get to. My parents are both also here in Lisbon, so I'm going to head over there and meet them now. So my mum and dad are in the queue for the elevator, the Gloria. Apparently the queue is like crazy and it's super, super long, so I'm going to go check that out. The other I've seen around here in a t-shirt. Because I'm absolutely boiling when the sun's out. Up we go in the lift. <laughs> no, there. Oh. On the red thing. Apparently up the elevator of Saint Justa, what is it? Santa Justa, Santa Justa. This Santa wasn't a bomb. Okay, so this wasn't on my itinerary of things to do, but apparently it was an hour and a half queue, which these guys decided to. The views are pretty good. So I think me and my dad have just worked out probably best piece of advice. Instead of queuing an hour and a half for this lift up here, you've just noticed you can actually just walk up through that section there, through those stairs, and come through this whatever the hell you want to call that and then you just bypass that whole hour and a half queue this is the street and that's the lift so go straight through there avoid an hour and a half queue so i'm running pretty behind schedule because we went to this restaurant called officio restaurant grabbed some portuguese cuisine now we're going to the church of saint dominic it's looking more like 46 hours in lisbon because obviously i've killed about two hours messing around with them but off we go so I have made it to the Church of St. Dominic, which has actually had quite a lot of bad luck over the years. The first earthquake that hit it in the 1500s actually nearly destroyed the place, and then it was hit by another earthquake in the 1700s, and then in the 1900s, there was actually a fire which caused a load of chaos. So I don't know what St. Dominic did. It was obviously misbehaving. So the first of the many districts in Lisbon that I'm checking out is called the Alfama district. This is one of the oldest districts and it used to be home to a lot of the poorer people within Lisbon, but now it's actually become one of the most desirable and expensive places in Lisbon to live. The second destination is a 20 minute walk from that church that we just checked out. It's called the Miradora da Senhora de Monte. I think I said that right. It's quite a lot of walking to get to the top. If you don't feel like walking the whole way, you can obviously jump in a taxi maybe even a tuk-tuk or a Segway, however you guys want to get from A to B. But when you get here, the views are really worth it, so. The next viewpoint is only a nine minute walk away. It's called the Miradora de Grassa, and its actual name is Miradora Sofia de Mello, named after a poet who spent a lot of her time admiring the views from there. Next on the list and only a six minute walk away is the Church of Sao Vicento of Faro. A ticket only costs two euros 50 if you are a student and five euros for everybody else that's not a student. It's a very grand church and it's also one of the most important monasteries in Lisbon and Portugal in general. A lot of the blue tiling that we also saw in Porto is also here. That scared the life out of me. I actually thought that was a real person that was maybe just like gonna scare you. Five minute walk from there, you will find the National Pantheon, which is a burial site for many of the most notable figures like presidents and poets, for example, such as Sofia de Mello. It's about five euros for entry for an adult, or if you have the Lisbon Pass, which I recommend you guys get in, it allows you access for free. It's got a really open space up here as well, which is really cool to watch the sunset. But I'm gonna head over to the castle now, which is a 20 minute walk to hopefully get the sunset at 5 p.m. 
Lots of these sites do have a lot of history behind them and museums within them. If you're spending a longer period of time within Lisbon, you could obviously spend more time within these museums. We've made it to the castle just in time for the sunset at 10 past five. A ticket up here will cost you five euros if you're under 25 and 10 euros if you're over 25. But to be honest, considering we've seen so many incredible viewpoints already, it's not the most important thing on your list, I don't think. I do generally love these kind of cultural trips. Obviously, Europe is full of rich history, cathedrals, monasteries, and castles and things such as that. But to me, this one did just feel like another castle. So just a five minute walk from the Castello de São Jorge will take us to Lisbon Cathedral, which is the oldest church within Lisbon. And unlike the church of São Domingos, this has withstood all the earthquakes. Look at the size of that. Guess who I've spotted? My dad. There he is, look at him. Smoking on his vape. So this lady's meditating. Wow, this lady plays the harp. Can I try the mulberry one, please? That one. I don't even know what a mulberry is. What is a mulberry? One of them. It's like it's a good. big blackfish thing, isn't it? Wow, look at the size of that. Well, let's share this. How is it? Epic. Epic. Epic mulberry ice cream gelato, even. Epic. So because it is getting later and it's cold outside, this evening we've come to the Lisboa Story Center, which is sort of like an interactive museum. You wear this headset and as you walk around, it's got all these different screens and all these little themed areas, which tell you about the history of Lisbon. If you've got your Lisbon card, it is free to come in. But if you don't, I believe it is 10 euros for adults. And it's only so now we're about to head to a restaurant called Tantora and it's where? 11 minutes walk from my hotel, so it's in perfect location, just like the hotel is. So I use this super cool app called Vivino, because all this just looks like a load of words to me. You can actually put the name of the wine in your app, gives you the rating and all the reviews of that wine. So that's a handy little tip. Tahini, which is amazing, this mint sauce and whatever the hell this is. What's this? Um, I don't know. Fun. Bye. Bye bye. So I am back in my hotel room right now. These pillows are so comfortable. I'm practically falling asleep just talking to the camera right now. Catch you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning, you guys. I'm actually watching a TV that couples as a mirror. If you want to be lazy and watch TV, but also be vain at the same time, you can do both. Also, a really, really cool feature about this hotel is every room comes equipped with its own little smartphone. You get to take this smartphone around with you. It's got free internet, free voice calls, city tips, loads of different apps like Spotify, Facebook that you can utilize whilst you're in the hotel and whilst you're walking around Lisbon. So any kind of fees or charges, or you don't necessarily have data on your phone when you're away, you can use the smartphone that these guys provide for you free of charge. So yesterday we managed to complete the Alfama district. Yes, it was rushed. Yes, we only had three hours to do it, but we still did it. I have just had breakfast. Breakfast was fantastic. It had a cooked breakfast option. Mushrooms were absolutely incredible, by the way. So definitely get the mushrooms. It had all the things that you need for a continental breakfast. Obviously, I was spending most of my time at the coffee machine because what more do you need than coffee? But it is now 10.20 a.m. and we are going to venture off into the Bassa district. Following that, later this afternoon, we're gonna check out the Bellum district. I'm super excited for today. So let's go and get as much done. So that was a glass that nearly smashed because my hands are flailing everywhere. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's go check out the Bassa district. I'll see you guys out there. So the first place within the Bassa district that we're gonna go check out is the Carmo Convent. This place was ruined in the 1700s by the earthquake. It's only a five minute walk from the hotel. So let's go head over there now. So I am inside the Agregio de Karma. A ticket in here will cost you five euros or four euros if you're a student. So it's crazy to think that this place was just destroyed in the 1700s by an earthquake. People were in, inside here just praying, doing their usual stuff that you do in a church. Obviously the roof just fell down. And 
just a five minute walk will take you to the Egregia de Sao Rock, one of the first ever Jesuit churches. And if you're wondering what a Jesuit is, a Jesuit is a member of the Society of Jesus. This is no longer used by the Jesuits and has since become a normal Roman Catholic church. So if you want to come say your prayers, you can from Tuesday through Sunday from 12.30. And just a two minute walk from the Egregia de Sao Rock will take you to the Elevator de Gloria. But I've been here for about 20 minutes now and these things don't seem to have moved so it looks like they might have broken down. Okay, yeah, definitely broken down. These things have just started moving again so I'm gonna go back to the top. Mum and Dad are missing me, of course. What's not to miss? We're gonna meet them at the Cafe Abrasiliera and have lunch. Then we're gonna all head over as a group to the district of Belem. I can see water and cannabis. Made it to Cafe Abrasiliera. Mum and Dad said they're 11 minutes walk away, so I think I've found John Malkovich. I feel like coffee's not that good in Portugal. And also this menu doesn't seem very appetizing. Cheese sandwich, ham sandwich, half a toast. Like what? They charge you more to eat outside than inside. Shellfish rice, 37 euros, and the restaurant, 35 euros. You got <laughs> your ham sandwich. But you got. That uh, looks appetizing, doesn't it? Yours is a long time. Cod, boiled potatoes, broccoli. Not the most appetizing looking thing. Awful. I think I could have had something. Um, yes, yeah, pretty good. And this is and this is 20 euros, guys. Oh, sorry, 22 euros if you eat it outside on the Esplanade. So we have just been charged the prices for eating outside, which are actually more expensive. Even though we ate within the restaurant, apparently we have to pay more because we ordered outside, despite the fact we ate there, which doesn't make any sense. And absolutely no help from their manager. He was super, super rude. Um, so absolutely do not come here. Terrible experience. Oh, oh it's very normal. Yes. Oh, oh, is that what they're all like? Abyssalaria. And there he is. TripAdvisor reviews say it all. Look at that. Three stars. Oh, three and a half stars. Don't come here. So I've just taken the 7 to 8 bus from Corpo Santo station, 15 minute journey. We'll take you to the Ponte 25 de Abril bridge, which obviously, as you can see in the distance, is massive and it resembles London Bridge. Very, very similar to the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. I'm not sure which came first, so who copied who. Also, there's a massive Jesus in the distance, which to be honest, as soon as I first saw it, it looked like an aeroplane. As you're walking through, on the floor, as you can see, there's these copper things which gives you cheeky little history about the bridge. Just found out from that short history lesson that the Golden Gate Bridge did actually come first in 1937 and then this thing here was completed in 1966, the year that England won the World Cup. The reason that this bridge was actually built was to connect Almada with Lisbon and it spans across the River Tagus. So next on the list we are heading over into Belem to Pastes de Belem which is a very very famous bakery. It still uses the original 187 year old recipe that was used to create the Pastes de Nata which is the egg custard uh, pastry. 20 minute bus journey on the 7 to 8 bus. So off we go, this is me. See how this compares to all the other egg tarts that I've had everywhere else. And this is it. It's warm still. It's a little bit crusty. Mm. It's really sweet. It's good. Even the dogs like the pastéis de nata. So next on the list would be the Jardim Botanico Tropico, which is just over there. It's a two minute walk, but unfortunately right now it is temporarily closed, but it is filled with, I believe it's 600 different species. So if you're into botany and flowers and pretty things like that, that is your spot. Next, 
we are going to go to the monastery, the Geronimus Monastery, which is that great big monstrosity of a monastery. Those two words don't really go together because monstrosity is a bad thing, but that huge thing there is where we're going to next. So let's do it. destination that we're going to head over to is the Monument of the Discoveries which is just over there you can see it in the distance it's about a five minute walk or so and then after that I'm going to meet with my mum and dad and we're going to go and watch the sunset from the Tower of Belem which is just over behind that building I have discovered the Monument of Discoveries the monument was built in 1940 to commemorate 500 years since the death of Henry the Navigator there's also a lot of electrical modes of transport here we've got electric bike things, electric bicycles, and we've got electric scooters. Found this super cool little spot to watch the sunset from. That is a good picture, isn't it? Oh, and then you've ruined it now. Why? Look at you, because you're in it. I'm not. Stay at your hair. Right, it is getting pretty cold now, so I'm gonna head back to the My Story Rossio to collect my luggage and my suitcase, and I'm heading to the second hotel. Wow. Just checked in to my second hotel, and this one is nowhere near as nice as the last one. Genuinely, I'm, I'm actually staying over in Alfama, but everybody's hungry, I'm hungry. Let's head over to the restaurant. And then you warm it. And you warm it. Maybe I think you meant to warm first. it first. Yeah, you're you meant to warm it first. Like Go on, then what? Stick your face in that. Rachel doesn't decide what tone it's got. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can never do any of this. I'm getting great. He doesn't even talk our audio, has he? No. Oh, it's my time. I know. Will you pull that down for God's sake? Are you actually recording me now? Yes. Horse mackerel with horse. The jaws taste of the same. Very salty. Eight out of twelve. Perfect. What is he doing? You wouldn't. You wouldn't have your hand there. You wouldn't be there in the first place. No, you wouldn't do that either. No. Whose yeah, dad is this? The one thing about the food that I've noticed in Portugal is, uh, food is really amazing. The quality Unless of the food, the restaurants. Yeah, unless you go to Café Ar Brasileira, but you won't be going to that place for obvious reasons. So it's 11 o'clock, I'm pretty exhausted. Do I believe that 48 hours is long enough in Lisbon? I think it's been rushed. Three days would have been perfect. But even so, if you've only got 48 hours, you can achieve so much. You can go and see all the things that you should probably see, just probably not in as much detail as you could do. Good morning, Lisbon. So we've got two hours to cram as many things that I haven't done already. First, we're gonna head over to the Arco de Triumph. <laughs> Arco de Rua Augusta. It's three euros. Come on. Rua Augusta Street, which has loads of different restaurants, cafes, bars. The Porto Cathedral, Castelo de São Jorge. And you've also got a fantastic view of the Praça de Comercio. Great view of Rio de Janeiro. We've got San Francisco over there. And we're back in Lisbon. This was just a car park. Yeah, it was. And then someone came along and decided, let's not make it into a car park, let's make it into a people park with people in it. And you can see in the distance, we've got the pink road, the pink street. Paint a flipping bit of tarmac pink and a lot of tourists flock here. Well, it worked, didn't it? I think that's the thing with Lisbon. It's just a very colourful city. It's a very short street, spanning from there to there, but it's pretty, you know, it's pastel colours. You've got some graffiti there, spicing things up a little bit. Erotic shows. It's a very Instagrammable street. If you're on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, <laughs> which I can't get into my account two months later, still. Got three hours until I fly, so I'm gonna aim to get to the airport an hour and a half before the flight. Before that, I'm gonna head over to Park de Nassois, which is only about a 30 minute journey. From there, there's only a 15 minute journey over to the airport. We're 
and that's my mum over there on the electric bike. So that bridge is called the Ponte Vaso da Gama and it is the longest bridge in the whole of Europe. So, is 48 hours long enough to do Lisbon? Uh, it depends on what your priorities are really. If you want to spend a lot of time within all the various different landmarks, like the cathedral within the castle, just to take in a bit more of the history, I feel like three days is probably a more reasonable amount of time. I did feel like because I only had the two days, I was going from place to place, trying to fight the time. Had I found an extra day, I probably would have booked a trip over to Sintra, which you can do within a day trip. Now, Lisbon card, is it worth it? Well, considering that the Lisbon card is 32 euros for 48 hours and most of the landmarks are between 3 to 5 euros you only have to have done about 8 of the landmarks to get your money's worth on top of that it also provides you with unlimited travel and access to the metros, the trams all throughout Lisbon so depending on what you're here for, whether it's see the landmarks and actually doing the touristy things, it's probably worth doing. However, if you're just here for a short stay on business and you're not planning on doing the landmarks, it's probably not worth it. Please subscribe and make sure you like the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.